This is the first section in the Vectors chapter, chapter 12 from the Pure Year 2 book. And um, you'll find there is some overlap with uh, the vectors that you do in the Statistics and Mechanics Year 2 book. So um, the two do work well together. You'll find that there are some things that you study in this chapter, which you do also in Statistics and Mechanics and vice versa. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at is 3D coordinates. So we're all used to 2D coordinates where uh, you have a coordinate pair that represent coordinates in a 2D plane, so X and Y. So if we want to represent coordinates in a 3D plane, then we need three coordinates. And you can see a diagram over here. So you can see that the uh, X and Y coordinates actually lay like on the flat plane, flat area, and the Z one sticks up. So that's the normal way that we do it. Um, and you can see like the X and Y, that's the same as normal. And then we add this Z coordinate, how far up we go. So here's an example of a coordinate. It's difficult to actually see when you've got like a 3D coordinate and you're representing it in 2D. Um, but so yeah, for example, 0, 6, 0, so that means 0 across for x, um, 6 across or back for y, and then 0 up for z. So that actually lays on the y-axis. There's another coordinate here. So this one's actually 3 across, uh, 2 back, and then 1 down. Yeah, so that's actually laying down below this sort of plane here where the xy uh, axis is. And uh, what we have then is in our 3D plane, we have these three coordinates. We just had an extra coordinate X, Y, and Z. I'll try and draw that plane here. So Z, Y, these are right angles here. Oh, sorry, Y, and we've got our, our Z that goes up. So we've got something that looks like that. And what we need to do is to work out the distance uh, not only between two 3D points, but also the distance between the point um, and the origin. And the way we do that is we just uh, use Pythagoras in 3D. And Pythagoras in 3D will give you the distance from the origin to a particular point. So x squared plus y squared is what we're used to in normal Pythagoras plus z squared. So we just had a third one. So this will give the distance, and it's written up here, the distance from the origin to a point x, y, z. If I want to find the distance between two points, so the distance between two 3D points to 3D points, and let's say that those points are x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, and z2, then what we do is basically, it's going to look quite long, so we do the difference between the x coordinates, so that could be x2 minus x1 or vice versa, it doesn't matter because when you square it, it becomes positive. Then y2 minus y1 or y1 minus y2, it doesn't matter again, because when you square it, um, it will make it positive. Now we're used to seeing this, we've probably seen that before. So now we just add our third dimension, z2 minus z1 or z1 minus z2 squared. And that will give you the distance between two points in three dimensions. OK, it's a nice, easy one to start with. Find the distance from the origin to that point. OK, well, all that is, is the square root of 4 squared plus minus 7 squared plus negative 1 squared. Now, I might be able to work, be able to work this out in our head. 16 plus 49 plus 1. Well, 49 plus 1 is 50, so root 66. Is that the name of a famous road in America? 
and um, I'm guessing that might simplify. I'm just going to be lazy and type it on my calculator. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, and if I wanted an answer as a decimal 8.12, that's the three significant figures. Right, here we want to find a distance between two points. Um, now there's the formula that um, I gave you before. They've got x1 minus x2. As I said, it doesn't matter which way around you do it because you will just get a positive when you square it anyway. So let's do my working down here. Big massive square root sign. So I'll do it the way I've written it. I'm going to be a rebel. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do x2 minus x1. So I'm going to call this x1, y1, z1, and this x2, y2, z2. So I'm going to do 8 minus 1, all squared, plus 6 minus 3, all squared, plus negative 5 minus 4, all squared. Right, what does that become? Well, the 8 minus 1, that's going to become 7 squared. 6 minus 3 is going to become 3 squared. The minus 4, minus 5, or negative 5 minus 4 is going to become negative 9 squared. Now, even if you had done them the other way around, 1 minus 8, well, I would have had negative 7 squared, negative 3 squared, 9 squared. You still get exactly the same answer. Right, so that's going to be 49 plus 9, which is 58, plus 81. I'm not going to do that in my head. I should do, really. 49 plus 9 plus 81, 139. So root 139. Now... That's not a square number, it doesn't simplify. And if I needed to give the answer as a decimal, that would be 11.8 to three significant figures. Right, that's a nice short one. You should now be able to do exercise 12a on page 338 of the textbook.